cylindrical capacitor. Now in this example, we have a solid cylindrical conductor radius A charge Q. So that's this conductor here. It's a cylinder which has radius A and charge Q. If it's a conductor, the charge must be stored only on the surface, right? And then we have another uh, cylindrical shell which has radius B. It has uh, the total length of the two cylinders. The length uh, of the two cylinders are the same, L, and the outer shell has a charge minus Q. So cylindrical conducting shell radius B has charge minus Q. So we can form a Gaussian surface. So forget about the charges at the at these surfaces. We're looking at uh, what is going on in between. So uh, this length is quite high and we're interested in the electric field inside. So that's uh, the a radial distance between A and B. So we form a Gaussian surface here and you can see that if I call the inner conductor A and outer conductor B, the electric field lines point from plus Q to minus Q. So plus Q resides on this surface and minus Q resides uh, on this surface, uh, the, um, the surface of the uh, shell. Okay, so uh, if I write Gauss law, the total electrical flux E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed Q in divided by epsilon zero. Now what is E dot dA? Uh, so the electric field lines and the area vector is uh, in, in the same direction. So they're both in the same direction. So this dot product is E dA. The electric field is only a function of r, so it comes out of the integral at a radial distance r. So at a radial distance r, what is the total area, the surface area here that these electric field lines see? It's going to be 2 pi r multiplied with the length of the cylinder. So that's the side area of the cylinder. So this is going to be e times 2 pi r l. And what is the charge enclosed by this cylindrical Gaussian surface? So just to clarify here, this Gaussian surface is uh, cylindrical. So it's basically another cylinder here. This is our Gaussian surface. All right. And uh, the charge enclosed by this cylinder is plus Q divided by epsilon zero. So we can see that the electric field lines are equal to, so two pi, one over two pi epsilon zero is two K because K is one over four pi epsilon zero. Q divided by RL in R hat direction. Okay. So what is the potential difference between A and B? Potential of A with respect to B is VA minus VB. This is minus the integral from B to A, path integral E dot DS, and that's minus integral from conductor B to conductor A, 2KQ over RL over L, DR over R. So DS vector here is DR in R hat direction. Okay, so they are in the same direction, DS vector and electric field. So that DR value going from B to A will actually have a negative value. So we have ds vector is equal to dr in r hat direction. Okay, so if we perform this integration, the potential difference delta v will be 2kq over l, 2kq over l. Uh, the, the, 
integral of dr over r is natural logarithm of r. So this would be uh, evaluated between uh, b and a. So the radius, uh, so basically this minus sign will switch the uh, lim the integration limits here so it will be from a to b and the radius at a is a and at b is b so once again this minus sign switched to the limit so this is b this is a so this becomes a to b okay so that is equal to 2kq over l natural logarithm of b minus natural logarithm of a which is natural logarithm b over a all right and if i look at the capacitance per unit length so remember capacitance is q divided by uh, delta v so q divided by delta v would be equal to l over 2q uh, natural logarithm b over a to the power minus one so if you look at capacitance per unit length uh, that would be equal to one over 2k natural logarithm b divided by a all right so uh, we can see that this is basically the capacitance of a coaxial cable. So you have an outer conducting shell and inner uh, solid uh, conductor, cylindrical conductor. And two concentric cylindrical conductors are separated by an insulator in the case of a coaxial cable. So here we have assumed that this insulator is air or vacuum. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we're considering the example of a cylindrical capacitor. Solid cylindrical conductor radius A ha uh, has charge Q, which only resides on its surface. And we have an outer shell radius B, which has charge minus Q, which also resides on its surface. If we write down Gauss law, considering a Gaussian surface for radius between A and B, so this is a r b so we're neglecting what is happening at the end points here we're only considering what's happening inside is charge enclosed q over epsilon zero so we have electric field 2k q over r l in r hat direction the potential of a with respect to b is minus integral b to a e dot ds and where ds is dr in r hat direction this integration gives us 2kq over l natural logarithm of r the minus sign switches the limits instead of b to a this becomes a to b so we have 2kq over l natural logarithm b over a and capacitance per unit length then becomes 1 over 2k uh, natural logarithm b over a so this is basically capacitance of a coaxial cable, which consists of two concentric uh, cylindrical conductors separated by an insulator.